A very good evening to all. With college activities commencing a few weeks ago, I'm sure all of you freshers have already had a taste of a hectic college life with back-to-back -back classes and labs. Pretty soon, you'll have more clubs and teams to work for, more workshops and events to attend, fests to organize, and much more. But somehow, there never seems to be enough time to manage everything that we need to do. I am sure that all of you would love to know the secret as to how exactly one can find the perfect balance between work and play to lead a fulfilling and enjoyable college life. Orientation 20 is very excited to help you answer this question. And for this very purpose, we have with us today our own NITT alumni, Mr. Jason Rodriguez. Jason is an alumni from the batch of 2017. After graduating, he has worked in R&D in hardware design at Texas Instruments. Now he works with Celo, a startup based in San Francisco. Jason is here to provide us with insight from a rich spectrum of alumni experience from the very first batch of REC Trichy to the most recent graduates. He has gained this knowledge through various interviews with other alumni, and he is here to share this with us the things that they wish that they knew when they started out through a fun and interactive session. I'm sure that the audience is super excited to meet Jason and I don't wish to keep him from you guys further. Over to you, sir. Welcome everybody to this year's session of Orientation 2020. Um, I assure you this is not going to be boring whatsoever. Uh, I'm going to try and attempt to keep it as participatory as possible. Now, um, is everyone able to see my screen? Okay, thank you. And um, I hope the people that are, are watching it from the stream as well are able to are able to see it. This is a very participatory session, and we'll have like more uh, instances for people to participate. Uh, don't worry about not being able to like come into the Google Meet or uh, the other way around. It's completely fine because the Streamyard link is going to provide the same experience to you as it does uh, here. Um, the only reason we're broadcasting it through uh, Google Meet is for the allowance of uh, time for breakout rooms. So as you can see, um, there is only one truth on the slide. I like to play this game each time I introduce myself. And um, you, can, you can type it on the chat, or you could use um, this link that I'm going to share um, through your Telegram right now um, to answer this. Um, so there are four options there. Um, there is only one truth among them. I have Spanish descent. I am a karate black belt. I like tacos and quesadillas. And my parents named me after the month that ended uh, last, J July, August, September, October, November, December. Great. I, I see a lot of yeah. holes trickling in. Trickling in. And... Um, you can you can also use the polling feature to to answer this question, and I'm happy to. Great. So I think a lot of you think that D is the right answer, and that's the that's the maximum that I've received the poll on. Um, and and well, there's only one truth, as I mentioned, and you need to really peel your eyes close to. And um, the truth is, it's B. I am a karate black belt. All the others are lies. And in fact, even the photograph that you're seeing. <laughs> Even though it looks really nice, it's not of me. It's a photo of Hugh Jackman um, that he posted on his Instagram off late. So um, welcome to welcome to this year's uh, session. Uh, a lot of what you're going to be doing uh, today may seem a little counterintuitive and stuff that you've not encountered in the past. So so be open to kind of learning. On a side note, as Arjuta mentioned, I work at a startup that is based in San Francisco. It's called Cello, and um, I lead some of the operations there. So. My working agreement with you for the remainder of this session, I uh, please share your feedback. I'm here to listen. This entire session is very participatory and best done with a partner. So if you have a partner, it's well and good. If not, that's completely fine as well. It's open to all. So if you have a relative or a parent um, that's, that's sitting nearby that wants to participate in this, I encourage them to because they're going to learn a lot as well through it. And I, I hope to, I hope to, um, you know, provide you the best. In addition, please use a notepad if uh, necessary. I will give my best and ensure that if you happen to participate and 
uh, engage with each aspect of the session, you're going to learn a lot as well. So without further ado, I want to tell you one thing. You guys are in, in IT Trichy at a really, really momentous time. Uh, all things considered, despite the pandemic and all of that hitting, I think um, you know if you isolate it for what it is, it is a really good time to be here. And um, you know, rankings are at the highest that we've ever seen. The network of alumnus, as of like 2020, stands to be the strongest. And the investment in each and every one of you uh, is is completely blooming and at at a peak. So I I think I really think that you guys deserve a pat on the back. You've earned it. Um, Go 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 ahead and give yourselves a nice clap. I'm going to pause here, and if there's any um, if there's any um, queries or questions, uh, please feel free to direct them to your points of contact. Arjuta is helping me out in this presentation. Uh, you are free to also um, you know uh, participate uh, by means of using the chat for all those of you who are in Google Meet. Uh, thanks so much for all the input that you guys have been sending in thus far. Really appreciate it. Um, so when I circulated the form earlier uh, today, I asked for a little bit of feedback. And this is sort of a word cloud that I received of all the, and, and this is, I, I want to give you guys a commitment that I've like listened to all of your feedback. And I've tried to inculcate each and every aspect of whatever you've asked for into this presentation. So going forward in this presentation, you're going to see and encounter a lot of the themes that you would asked for as questions here. All right. So uh, what's on the table for today? We've got a really exciting session planned out. We're going to talk about effective, um, being effective inside of NIT Trichy. Uh, uh, one of the key components that I was requested to add was effective remote learning. And I think that that's very, very important and something that we that is very, very timely and something that everyone wishes they knew. Um, so now what? I think without further ado, I want you guys to, to um, take a moment to go ahead and adjust your body to uh, a, a positive body posture. I think this is among one of the most important things as we get started to this. Uh, what is positive body posture? Well, you first have to relax your back, shoulders relaxed, maintain eye contact with um, your partner. And I could do this very well in person, but you know I, I can't see you guys now. But I remember distinctly in the in the session last time, I remember calling out multiple people in between that were crossing their arms. So some say it's a positive, um, it's a superpower, but exhibiting this with a deep breath really, really can set the tone for the remainder of the session. So I encourage you to kind of get into this positive body language as you get started. Whether you're viewing this remotely, whether it's one-to-one -one or not, go ahead and get started with these affirmative movements. Perfect. So. I want you guys to go ahead and ID some of these brands. I'm going to point my cursor, if you can see it, to a brand here. Uh, and if you could, in the chat or in the in the you know in your text boxes with the with your uh, point of contact, if you could tell me which company I'm pointing at right now. Great, I see answers coming in. Uh, Anand says it's it's Motorola. And that is correct. Uh, do you know who owns Motorola now? Curious, just. That's correct as well, Lenovo. Uh, so the reason I presented all of these brands to you, um, these are these are 57 of the original brands that were in the Fortune 500 that have been there since 1955. Now, the reason I present these to you, the people that have actually been in these companies and are currently heading some of these companies and are a part of it, are people that have sat in an IT tree where you have. And that's a really meaningful uh, network to be a part of. And you're, you're continuing to. So the batch of 2024 will be a part of this rich network. And it's very, very important that we embrace that. right? So this is the Ivy League, the schools of Ivy League, some of them. And uh, in addition, these are some of the top startups in the world as well. And you will find an IT Trichy um, alumni everywhere. And that's really stunning. Now, shifting gears a little, I want to talk to you a little bit about one of the most important aspects that is you know, often overlooked, and that is the handshake, right? Uh, a lot of people don't know how to handshake, and that's what costs them a job, uh, a deal, and so many other things, right? More than 70% of people don't feel confident about the ability, and this is a deal breaker in so many interactions. In fact, I can tell you if when I shake hands with a person, I can tell if I'm going to stay in touch with them for the longest time or not. And that's how important it is. So what is a good handshake? And this can lead to an activity if you have a partner that's nearby 
or call call your sibling or call your parents and you know you can participate in this um so the first trick to it you've got to maintain very good eye contact maintain a natural smile you can exchange pleasantries some people tend to you know crush another person's hand but that's not it you've got to go straight with it and and try and um you know shake the person's hand it has to be in a firm up and down motion and this is probably the most important advice that i would give you someone in my internship as i started work one of the alumni had pointed this out and i think that that was really really valuable advice feel free to post any questions that you may have um and and arjuna i encourage you to if possible um each time you spot a question um you know um give me a shout out in case i don't see it right perfect um so you know moving moving ahead i think it's really important that each person um develops the ability to think fast and to talk smart because among other things this is one thing that college doesn't teach you and a lot of alumni have felt the dearth of like conceptual education to be able to 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 embrace a framework to talk smart now one of the most important things that you will be doing across the course of your um um across the course of your um you know your your time uh, at nit trichy and and moving forward is crafting out a nice looking elevator pitch so an elevator pitch is very simple the reason it's called an elevator pitch it's because by the time you go from the top floor to the bottom floor you should be ready to convince a person to take up that job or take up a deal and it's very important so there is a reason you should be good at this and you should have rehearsed this a lot of people believe that you know you get the ability to do it inherently but i can assure you i've practiced this at least 100 times before i've presented it to another person so the trick here is to sell yourself uniquely give a flavor of who you are be modest and confident and keep it very very concise right so let me let me actually give you a flavor like an example of it so i want you to take out your notepads and write out an elevator pitch for yourself i will read out mine and then you can you can also start to write uh, yours out i'll give you a minute to do this so hey my name is jason while i'm not working at leading ecosystem at uh, efforts at salo uh, in san francisco i indulge in helping um helping startups grow my hobbies include reading and non fiction and sometimes i write as well i used to previously do research for a hardware company called texas instruments but now i've i've switched over to an, another interesting facet of life so this is this is my elevator pitch um if you could take a moment and write it uh, write down your elevator pitch and i've circulated a form um that is present here arjuna can you go ahead and circulate that form that i uh, shared and if you guys go ahead and like people sitting in the audience as well as go ahead and type it out in that little box there and click the submit button i will listen to it i will read it and i'm not going to call you out don't worry about that i will though what i will do is i'll definitely i'll uh, give you feedback on it and i'll try my level best to give you feedback on your your relevator pitch as well so take a moment and do this i'm going to give you about a minute and a half to 90 seconds to do this excuse me sir yes anand uh, where can we find that uh, form sir on your telegram and okay sir think a little bit more about what makes you unique and how it is that you can you can go ahead and um, you know create that unique element of of uh, your personality there right and an elevator pitch is what sets you apart and i think it's very important for you to participate and to make that happen I'm I'm ready to give you feedback. Who wants to go? Um anyone on the meet call would like to um go ahead and and present um like a quick uh thought. Tanmay. 
Go ahead, yes, Tanmay. Can I? Yes, Tanmay. Good Welcome. evening. Good evening, sir. Good evening, Tanmay. How are you doing today? Uh, decent, if not good. So wonderful. And where are you? Where are you currently? Uh, I'm an Indian expatriate based out of Dubai. That's wonderful. Okay. Uh, uh, so, uh, so I'll present my elevator pitch. Yes, please go ahead. So, so when I'm away from the struggles of studying or the struggles of revising for exams, I'm always munching on uh, data related to automobiles or cricket or just uh, spending my time watching cricket matches. And and if I'm not doing any of these things, I'm either exercising or I'm dancing or listening to songs. So that's what sets me or defines me. That's awesome. Sir, can I have a try? Sir? Yes, please go ahead, Anand. Yes, sir. Hi, everyone. I am either Anand Jerome or Dolphin. The reason is that I like swimming very much and I also like teaching, dancing, music, etc. Uh, I'd like to become a professor in mechatronics in the future. Oh, that's lovely. Thank you, sir. Great. So I'm going to go ahead and allow you guys to like to present your elevator pitch to your friends, and you can make new friends as you as you present to each other. Uh, you have about a minute, uh, less than a minute actually, about um, uh, thirty seconds to actually make your pitch, and then you can come back to the main room. Sometimes you may drop out of the room. Feel free to kind of go back to the link and click it again and come back, and uh, I'll, I'll see you here in a minute. Okay, I think you should be able to get into the room in in just about a second, and then you can you can also feel free to um, to to remove your uh, I mean to have your video in place so that you know another person can see you, you can get to know them, and it will be really exciting for you as well. I think a lot of people are. Hey, Monish, do you have any questions, any thoughts? It's lovely seeing all of these uh, these pictures coming in. I actually love it. The some of the pictures are really interesting. I think all of you are doing a really fun, fantastic job of uh, maintaining an interesting life outside of work as well. Yeah. So we've pinned out the uh, the uh, form, and you can go ahead and use it as well at a later point in time. Yes. Uh, uh, if I have your name correctly, Pandavya, did you have a question? Feel free to raise hands in case you have questions, and I'm happy to attend to you as well. So, in case um, you're um, in the in the main room with me, would you like to go ahead and give your elevator pitch, and I could I could give you some feedback on it? Who wants to go? Please go ahead, take your chance. Anybody? Uh, yes, sir. Yes. yes, Akshat, please go ahead. Yes. Karthik, you can go yes, ahead. Sir. Yes, Akshat, go yes, ahead. Yes, sir. I'm Akshat. Uh, I like reading about business and finance. Uh, and my keen interests are basically cricket, uh, football. Uh, my goals keep changing. I kind of confuse always. Like, uh, I kind of switch to things like uh, once I'm learning programming, then I'm learning finance. Uh, but yeah, basically everything 
my goal revolves around business mostly yeah thank you awesome karthik do you want to go next hi yes sir yes please go ahead um i am karthik like i love logic which has led me to places unknown like i started uh, um i started to learn programming i like the thing is that wherever there is logic i like it okay so i i i am able to explore many domains and able to catch the essence in it excellent um so one one bit of feedback for everybody as you as you get started your elevator pitch needs to hold a person's attention keep it short sweet concise that is the most important thing so it should relay exactly what it is that you're speaking to the other person for it should be in in essence exactly what a person needs to actually get to know you so make sure that you're following these guidelines as you as you decide to um to um get um, you know your elevator pitch in place right um so without further ado i want to kind of move on to the next uh, how, how were your breakout rooms can you give me like a quick uh, feedback rating on 1 to 5 on how you thought the breakout rooms were in the chat maybe was it a good good experience did you get to know somebody i did not even have a breakout room only one guy joined in my breakout room oh, okay interesting well, i yes. well, i managed to join and there is this uh, really nice girl from america apparently she seems nice but we didn't really get to talk to each other but we seem to share uh, the same interest of watching anime so that's cool that's awesome um pavna and i i hope that you know you get to you get to meet this person in person whenever uh, things open up and i think I think that was one of the bigger questions that I received uh, on that form, and uh, like, when are we getting back to campus? I have no answer to that just yet, but I hope that you guys all um, have a fantastic time in the remainder of the presentation. So, moving on, um, thanks for your feedback. Uh, you can also feel free to to send across the elevator pitch to me. I can give you a lot of good feedback. You can use the uh, form. The form is going to continue to be open until the end of the session, and you can always send it to me, even if it's incomplete. I'm happy to help you out. Right. Now, coming shifting gears a little, I think some of you have asked um, about advice surrounding how you can manage your time better, and I think the most important thing is you need to be like you need to be aware of how much time you actually have on campus, right? Um, and it's very important to actually pay attention to some of these details. Now, thirty-five thousand um, forty hours, and I did the math for this, by the way, is the amount of college life you actually have to make the most of. you probably have even shorter because you've started the semester late but nonetheless this is in the ballpark the exact amount of time that you have now if you're short sighted with regard to your goals or if you're far sighted um with regard to you know um with regard to what it is that you want to achieve this may cost you and it costs you very dearly um and then this is something that a lot of alumni have felt as they as they get out of campus and it's very very important that you think beyond the scope of like your immediate uh, goals right so here's some math you have about 1460 days that's four years of engineering uh, students in architecture may have like one yeah, extra year but nonetheless you have about um four years here right out of which let's subtract the amount of time you spent uh, for sleep um maybe another you know 250 to 300 days that you spend eating and socializing um maybe another you know 240 days in class and the reason i've kind of put an asterisk there is because most of us spend time in class sleeping right so um wanted to capture that overlap there so if you look at in in summary how much you arrive at with uh, all of that time disappeared it's literally just 396 days that is a little over a year and that is all you have to actually spend time productively on campus now how do you actually want to spend all of that time it's very important that you actually think about this right as you get started um um so as you as you kind of get um, onto the bandwagon thinking about this now let this sink in so most of us as we begin like show of hands how many of you feel like you have goals um that surround studying hard getting good grades these are these are overarching goals right but then again think thinking uh, aloud um most of the time we as students end up having more goals than that we want to play the guitar we want to learn how to code lead a team you know work out join a club there's so much stuff that we want to do out there right and um it's just so hard to do all of those things as we as we kind of get um um get get started and you know we want to score the job change the world have like a really crazy social life now here's the thing <clears throat> if you really want to pick up something 
this is my philosophy to it and a lot of people that have been through been through the time uh, here it, like that have you know wanted to pick up on on machine learning and, and a variety of things um have have you know in a sense picked up only you know they've they've learned to say no to a variety of things and that's what's helped them go all into to some of this so all you need to do is plan what you want to do and double down on all of that instead of trying to trying to do this it's as easy as it sounds it's very hard so maybe as an exercise since you have your notepad open quickly write down three three big overarching goals that you have and um, for for the remainder of college like you have four years ahead of you so why don't you quickly write down three things that you're thinking of as top of mind right now i'm going to give you about 30 seconds to do that and then we can get started on it Yes. That's a really good question. Um and and something that I'm going to answer in the Q&A. Uh thanks for flagging this webinar. But considering you guys are working on your um, elevator pitch, I think I'm going to quickly answer this one. So if you ask me how you can do it with minimal amounts of pressure I think I'm going to give you advice that's very contrarian so instead of multitasking to actually focus on uh, you know studies um, you know gaining like technical knowledge you start to single task like focus on what it is that you're actually doing focus on the objective of it and try to try to do what you need to now if you want to become a subject matter expert in like hardware in software in you know AI in uh, blockchains there's so much stuff that's happening out there right and if you want to be this this so much of it is noise so picking right, the right field can sometimes give you give you um you know give you an edge so that i i would i would probably go ahead and do it um but also flagging that there is a, a q and a session and i'm open to also taking questions during the q and a session right thank you sudat so sudat you are um i'm going to ask you to go ahead and uh, uh talk about your goal real quick to me can you unmute and go ahead and speak about your goal then well, i'm actually not very aware of what to do but uh, as a person i am personally an introvert and my main goal is to convert to an extrovert in my college life make some good friends and be useful to the society in some way that's great that's the main point that's great that's awesome thank you okay um i'm going to call out um divya darshini divya darshini can you go and present your goal Okay, Anand, go ahead. Can you tell me your goal real quick? Yes, sir. It is nothing but swimming, dancing, and music. So. That's great. So, um, thank you all for sharing your goals on the chat as well as um, you know across on the on the live stream. So, you know, most times the question here is, how can I how can I make my goals? How do I set goals? How can I make them smart? How can I pick those three things that feels like a lot of pressure? And that's that's what the constant theme of like what i end up um, hearing from you guys is so if you look at what it means for goals to be smart they need to be specific in that well defined and clear they need to be measurable like something that you can track right they need to be achievable don't set like unrealistic uh, goals and they need to be time bound that is probably among the most important thing so for example i think uh, like i'm going to take on um, uh, anand's goal of like you know he has a goal of swimming or like getting into shape right so this uh if you ask me do you think that this is a like show of hands how many how many of you think that this is a smart goal or or a specific goal for that matter well like i see that not a lot of you agree and you're right you are because um if you look at it it is not very specific it's not targeted to like the exact goal that you want to achieve um and uh we can make this smarter so how can we do that let's get started so if i want to make this more specific maybe let me go ahead and say i want to go ahead and 
obtain a gym membership at my local community center and work out four days a week to be healthier. So now I've officially made it very specific and it makes it harder for me to actually evade the goal. So like that way, when you say, I want to study hard, it's not necessarily a specific goal. We want to make it as specific as possible and try to learn as much as we can about ourselves. So learning music or becoming an extrovert, there's so much that we can do to, to you know, achieve that. And that could be really interesting. Thank you for sharing that, by the way, Sadat. How can we make it measurable? Um, you know, we can we can say every day of the week, you can track your progress towards the goal. And that could be really interesting. So I'm not going to go ahead and read in, uh, all of this as you can, you can do it yourself. And um, if you look at like how I made it like smarter, you can say on the 14th, like, which is like a time bound, you can say, you know, that you want to lose a specific amount of uh, weight by doing a specific activity. All right. Um, does this help? Does this make sense to you? That's great. Wonderful. Thank you so much for your feedback. Um, feel free to keep your comments and questions coming in the chat. I always welcome um, feedback there. And um, I'm also very happy to kind of speak with you. Um, um, shifting gears, I think presentation skills are among one of the most important things that you will learn. I don't have a lot of content in the slides because I think content on slides is boring and, and we should never have content on slides. Um, but if you ask me, the best way to present is to have like minimalistic content there. Focus on brevity and, and clarity in what you present. Uh, make sure you understand the audience very well, right? That is probably the most important thing. Um, uh, an example, I'd be biased, but an example of a good presentation is this presentation, right? Uh, I hope you learn a thing or two from this as you, as you kind of get started with uh, college. Now, I don't know if um, a lot of you are um, part of a network, like a professional network called LinkedIn. Um, but personally, there is one thing that is more important than your resume in the 21st century, and that is your LinkedIn profile. How you manage your LinkedIn profile is probably the most important thing that you do in the foreseeable future. I think if you're able to, um, as, as soon as possible, Create a LinkedIn profile and try to try to co-brand with NIT Trichy. You can say that you're an undergraduate student at NIT Trichy, and that is at least like at a baseline something that you have going for you. So, um, in addition, like for coders, I personally recommend using GitHub as a resume. It's very very useful. Um, so, if you look at something that makes like Abby's profile here very strong, she has a very strong um, headline that clearly says that she's an MBA candidate at Stanford's Graduate School of Business. In addition, she has a custom URL. I think that is very, very useful and very easy for like search engines to track you and to find you. Uh, in addition, she has a very nice summary as well. So combining the knowledge that you've learned in your elevator pitch and here, it could be really interesting for you to summarize what it is that you're passionate about and, and put it into your LinkedIn profile. Um, again, like this is something that you could find very interesting and it could give you a lot of uh, a headway over other people from other colleges as well, just starting early, right? So I'm going to pause here and um, do you guys have any questions thus far that I can take? Sir, I have two, sir. Um, yes, uh, Karthik, sir, go ahead. Sir, uh, the first one is like, uh, how do you decide, like how to eliminate options to pick just three, sir? Like, like yes, uh, that's a good question. Um, and I'm, I'm afraid I have time only to take your first question, but I'm going to leave the door open for your second question on the chat and I'll respond to it. Okay. So to your first question, which is, um, how do you, how do you, um, pick only three and eliminate the rest, right? So try to kind of make us like take a, take your notepad and write down a set of skills that you feel very confident about personally. What are the things that you feel very, very confident about in delivering to an audience, right? So if you pick, um, um, let's say, you know, you're, you're very confident with your skill to code or your skill of swimming, look at how you can be in the top 10% in the world for that specific skill, right? And if you're able to, like, if you're able to do that for the world, then as you, as you kind of uh, think about it, if it makes you happy and if you're able to be at the top of your uh, skill, then that is something that you want to kind of stick with. And as you, as you look at it, um, each skill takes about, about, you know, um, about uh, it's said that it's commonly said that it's 10,000 hours of focused effort. I'd like to believe so as well, but let's say even if you, you know, reduce that and you have like a lot lesser time, try to see stuff that you could, you could try and see through till the very end. I hope that helps. <coughs> so, um, 
So moving on. Um, yes, sir. Um, thank you. Yeah. So moving on, I, I noticed that um, a lot of you have, uh, you know, your, your body posture that we talked about initially has dwindled. And um, again, like quick, quick, take a deep breath, sit back and, and, and listen to, I mean, you can, you can kind of focus, um, regain your focus back on the presentation, right? Are you guys having a good time so far? Thank you. Mm -hmm. That's very good. So in, in terms of like effective, um, like it's very important to communicate effectively so that people get exactly what it is that you're trying to say. And, and it is very hard to do this because I think it's harder to say something in lesser amount of words than it is to say it in more number of words, right? So I have a quick question for you and you can use the same Google form to answer that, right? Um, what do you think comprises of uh, effective communication more, verbal or non-verbal communication? Can you, can you quickly, um, you know, make a shout out or post it on the chat or either is fine? Well, we have like, we have a mixed mixed uh, review here. A lot of people say verbal, non-verbal, verbal, non-verbal, non and um, you know, wow, this is this is awesome. I'm seeing. I think you. I feel that it's verbal from my side. Yeah, um, but then again, like when a speaker asks you if uh, it's verbal or non-verbal, it's usually the more contrarian answer, isn't it? <laughs> but then, I'm kidding. I'm but kidding. then, I'm kidding. yeah, no, I generally do disagree with the speaker many times, but here there's something that okay is is in line with my with my thoughts and my beliefs so that's great that's great um awesome so um that being said i want to okay so we have a lot of responses that have poured in and a majority of you said verbal which is super cool so um you know a, a professor at ucla um dr albert had um, you know recently done um, not recently but sometime in the uh, 90s had done some interesting research surrounding personal communication right and um, the 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 interesting statistic that um, you know he he arrived at that that really made a big difference in the way in which people communicate was that 93% of like the focus when it comes to personal communication came on the voice the tone and the body language that is the non verbals so majority of it is the non verbals whereas only 7% comprised specifically about the words a person spoke so keep this in mind because it's very important that you actually pay attention you know maybe like focus on like so right now i'm not able to double click and you know really dive deep into this but i feel like there is a lot more to be spoken about and i will guide you to find resources to actually help you become a more effective communicator. And I think that's one of the most important aspects of, of the, the skills that you want to pick up as you, as you kind of go through um, life in an IT teaching. So um, I, I want to kind of take a moment to, to um, circulate a poll real quick here. Um, and, and uh, you know, uh, uh, can you read this sentence and tell me how many, how many, uh, uh, Fs you can count um, in in the in the um, the prompt that I've given, right? And I've added the question to to the um, to the same link. You can go ahead and refresh the page, and you'll be able to see it in the link itself. Uh, count the number of Fs and send me a response right away. Oh wow. I'm going to go ahead and give you the, wow, I'm seeing four, three, six, wow, it's all over the place. Keep submitting your responses, I'm, I'm seeing, wow, I think, so my pie chart here says that a majority of you think that it is it is actually three. Some of you think that like a, a couple of you that are interesting said one. I like you guys. Like you guys think that there's one F. Uh, so awesome. And so here, the number of the correct number of Fs in the sentence that reads Finished files are the result of years of scientific uh, study combined with the experience of years. 
has a total of six Fs, um, not seven, not five, six Fs. And a lot of people, when they read out sentences, they tend to miss out on certain details. Now, the terminal F in the alphabet, um, in, the, in the word that reads off, that occurs three times in the sentence is often missed out. It's finished, files, off, off, scientific, and off. So there are a total of six Fs that many of us miss out on. But if it's, if it's any consolation, um, I tried this out with, with a session I did with Crypto NITT, uh, a club on campus this morning. And, uh, and you know, a majority said three. In fact, I myself said three. So, uh, great. So as, a, as a, maybe a guiding principle, as I shift gears a little, the purpose of that exercise was to help you capture some of, in essence, some of the things that you may miss out on as you get, uh, you know, as you get carried away in the situation, right? You're often missing out on some details. Um, now, um, in, in helping you kind of choose your goals and like thinking about, um, about college, I, the best advice that I've received so far is for you to commit time to things that you need, seek feedback from people, figure out a way to compound yourself and to find your own PayPal mafia. I really like this concept of the PayPal mafia because, um, you know, it is, it is something that embodies, um, the, the startup ethos and it, like uh, a lot of people end up finding their co-founders in college and those are the best friends that they you know they spent four years building out something and they they launch it and um, PayPal was launched this way and it could be really exciting for you to find what would be your own PayPal mafia on on campus as well so get to know your people and like the breakout rooms are probably one way to do that and you know you may end up rooming with somebody and there's so much uh, for you to learn from other people so become mindful of your time the people that you're with will eventually go on to be in those Ivy League schools, those Fortune 500 companies, those startups, et cetera. So it's very, very important that you spend time getting to know the people, right? Um, one principle I want, to, um, want you to kind of take back and think about is compounding early. And compounding is one of the most, like Albert Einstein said this, and he says that uh, compounding is one of the most underrated uh, concepts because nobody actually understands and appreciates it enough for you to actually use it, right? And all I want you to kind of keep in mind is that whatever you have today, if you have like 500 rupees, that 500 rupees is not 500 rupees tomorrow. Ideally, that 500 rupees would be 500 plus that little that it's gained today if it's compounding. So make sure that you're placing yourself and your wealth in places that you're able to compound. I know that a lot of people don't want to be focused on their money right now, and that's not that's not the focus of this. But it's very important to think about how you can compound because compounding is probably among the most important principles there. And just like money can compound as you place it in uh, in you know in in a bank, etc. You, if you focus on compounding yourself and placing yourself in instances where you can learn a lot from this compounding, even if it's just one percent each day. At the end of the year, many of you may have heard this before, you're 3,800% better than you started out with. Because the idea here is we're all very used to thinking linearly, like one today, two tomorrow, three day after tomorrow. But that's not how it works when it comes to compounding. Today, if I have 10,000, in five years, I have 20,000. But in the next five years, I won't have you know, 30,000. I'll have 40,000. In the next five years, I'll have 80,000. And that just keeps on going, right? So compounding is probably one of the most important angles. Think about how you can compound yourself. If you want to be doing, um, you know, learning the guitar, pick up, pick it up for three minutes or five minutes every day. Focus on it and do it. And if you continue to do that with that 1% improvement each day, focus on the improvement and the delta, you will see a lot of improvement in yourself. Okay? So here are three principles that I want to relay to you that I've uh, gathered from people regarding being effective remotely, uh, right? Um, does, does anyone have questions thus far for, for me regarding the concepts? Okay, I, I, someone asked me, what is the PayPal mafia? I want to clarify that. Uh, so the PayPal mafia, now I want you to Google search this at a later point in time. Please don't Google search it now. Uh, it, is, it is a group of six, uh, six or eight people, including Elon Musk, Peter Thiel, uh, that, that started uh, PayPal. And what was interesting about them is once you find this group of people, all of the people in the PayPal mafia basically quit PayPal and they went on to start their own multi-billion dollar company. And if you look at the collective valuation of all of those companies, it crossed like, you know, they've, they've owned literally all big, uh, big, you know, uh, companies in the Valley. And 
shout out to Satvik for answering his uh, peers' question. I think that's a really great trait as well, right? Awesome. Um, so shifting gears to, you know, how, how can you be more effective remotely? And I think it's very, very important that you actually spend time thinking about this as, you know, you're getting started. And a lot of people have the, you know, have the fortune of having started on campus and then went remote. So they've experienced a bit of like, um, you know, being on campus. But as you kind of start remotely, it is very important that you try to try to maintain some amount of like your mental health as well as like your physical health to, to you know, ensure that you're doing well. I know that you have a lot of classes all the time, but um, these are some of the guiding principles that I would I would uh, attach to um, to uh, working effectively remotely. So while a lot of you have asked me questions surrounding time management, I don't think time management is key here. When you're playing with something that is an animal like um, like remote work, you want to be thinking about attention management. How can I manage my attention better and try to focus on things that really matter? And that comes from essentially single tasking. Pick what you want to do, choose what you want to obtain out of it, and focus on attaining that. I've been practicing this new uh, habit that's been working out really well for me, which is to switch off my phone. For the longest time, I never, um, you know, I never did it, and I realized that like my phone is the, one of the biggest trainers. Uh, so back when I was in campus, there was no Wi-Fi. So that was among probably the best reasons uh, for me to have gotten to know my peers as well as um, you know, people in and around. And I strongly recommend this to you as well. Next, um, GCal everything. What that means is if you have a calendar app, don't need a to-do list or anything. As long as a, a task can find time on your calendar, you put it on your calendar and you focus on putting everything on, um, you know, on your calendar. And for some of you, I can go ahead and present to you like what my calendar looks like. But each moment from the time that I wake up all the way till when I sleep, it's been chalked out in 30 minute intervals. And I know exactly what I'm doing at a given point in time. Right now, my, my time has been blocked out for speaking with you guys. Similarly, there is always a point in the day where I've, I've chalked out time for, say, free time as well. So it's important for you to do that as well. Right. Um, and as I as I kind of arrive to the uh, fag end of my uh, presentation, I want to like make a shout out here. It's it's very important that you make the most of what the experience that you've kind of gathered here, and and you know the the learnings that you've had thus far, right? So um, so um, really encourage you to to spend some time to get to know that, and uh, and yeah, um, um, as we as we kind of um, get to the end of the presentation, I really want to thank you all for. Uh, you know your attention. I think a lot of you have been really focused and you know focused on getting the best out of this experience and making my um, my experience better as well. And uh, and um, um, I would uh, encourage maybe Arjuta or one of the organizers. Can you can you start to flag uh, questions that you may want me to answer? And um, for the ones that I'm not able to, I'm definitely open on email as well, and we can definitely connect there. But uh, Please feel free to kind of ask uh, questions, um, um, and and this is this is um, you can you can go ahead and ask it in the uh, this is going to kick off the Q and A, so you can go ahead and ask questions. Um, feel free to ask them, and I'll I'll be happy to answer. Okay, I, I'm going to take one, and then like I think I'm going to allow um, the questions to be curated. The, uh, how do you find the correct group of peers? There's no right formula to doing this. I think anyone that can bring out the best in you is probably the be the, the the right person to to hang out with, right? Uh, how do you co-brand uh, with NITT using LinkedIn? Um, very simple. When you say that co-brand is a big word, but if you break it down, all I'm saying is you say that you're an undergraduate student at NITT. That already gives you a common ground with you know 65,000 other alumnus who are doing really well for themselves, and that's that's how you win, right? Um, how to get a startup idea and work from it uh, from scratch? Well, uh, keep 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 l learning, listening, and keep looking around. Um, there's definitely problems that you want to solve and think about, and I'm sure that you know in the course of like uh, thinking about it, you will you will end up uh, finding um, a solution to the problems. Um, um, a highly successful life or a balanced life. Uh, I would say both, um, but but more more important to have like balance because 
it's very important to to uh, also that being said i don't think it's an either or it's very important that you can kind of um, you know choose uh, what it is that um, you want out of your own life and that's that's very important um how to develop a uh, verbal communication skill that's an excellent question let me assure um so to develop like effective uh, verbal communication um i would suggest that you read a lot and listen to the way in which people speak if there's anyone that you admire that speaks really well i i know i have like role models when it comes to speaking and those are the people that i listen to over and over again and make sure that i try to embody a lot of like what they do so as you as you kind of get um, get um, to it i think you can definitely learn a lot um um i know i know we're approaching time um arjita can you um flag some questions for me that um you know that you may think um i would want to that's a that's a really good question um uh i think i think um so we live in a world where plan b's are are great i encourage you to kind of look at reed hoffman um that's the founder of linkedin his way of planning it's called abz planning and i i embody that quite a bit so i maintain a plan b for everything that i do and it's not necessary that i focus on the plan b but i know that if the plan a doesn't work out it's not the end of the world for me at least so sometimes it's good to go all in for what you believe in but also at the same time it's always good to think about like your plan b and to have it i know that's a little bit of a cop out when it comes to answering your question in like you know either or but i really believe that you know having like multiple plans and working towards them is very very important um any other question in the uh, youtube that you can ask me yeah um anyone that can bring out the best in you is is um is uh, is a good group to be with i think it's it's super important to to hang like make sure you hang out with people that bring out the best in you right um and even remotely there is a lot that you can you can do um um yeah uh, how do you eradicate procrastination that's a good question when i figure it out i'll tell you tomorrow <laughs> uh but I I don't have a concrete answer to it uh, as as it stands because uh I think you know you you're probably better off learning from the gurus that have successfully eradicated uh, procrastination um you know it is it is sometimes a skill that works to your advantage but for the most part it's not I think you know having 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 it on the calendar most times we procrastinate because we don't know what we have to be do and I think that that tip that I gave you earlier in that remote work slide which is gcal everything google calendar everything that you're doing that will give you like specific direction for what you need to be doing at a particular point in time and even if it's having fun like make sure you put it like if i'm watching a movie on netflix put it there like it will give you like and it's always good to look back as well right so you can do that as well um mastering ms office adds extra value to our resume um i would you know i i personally consider ms office as baseline skill like in that as engineers that are entering university i would not like i would assume a person knows ms office and it's always good to like learn as much as you can maybe like you know going deep into like excel to learn formulas etc and automating stuff is very very important in fact like one of my i'll, I'll give you like another tip that like one of my managers at uh, uh ti used to give me it's that you know anything that you do more than 3 times you need to figure out a way to automate so when you when you think about automation it's very important that that's that's a very important principle that lets you that you kind of think reclaim your time in a sense right how to manage between studies and entertainment that's a good question um i think you know uh study what you know has you enjoy and enjoy what you study like it's it's important to really like um, build a mindset where you know right now you may have gotten allocated to departments and all of that but um you know what matters at the end of the day is what you've what you've uh, truly um you know intended to study i saw your question uh, tanmay about uh, you know uh, financial um like how do you become financially smart over uh, the period of nitp right so um like one one way to do that is to not be on campus and to spend uh, exorbitant amount of money uh, doing you know random things and and you know you guys like by by default because of like um 
uh, remote um, education, you're, you're saving a bit of money there. But but if you ask me really on, on campus, you need to find out the places that like drain your your finances and, and try to be smart in the long run. Like that's my advice for you. Because being financially smart in inside of MIT Tritchie does not necessarily um, you know, lead you to like saving like you're you're being penny penny uh, wise pound foolish is like the saying there because technically there is not the place that you want to save money. Good example of it. I, I had a friend that you know spent a lot of money to to you know get like better at one skill, and now he makes a five times as much as the average person just because he he got really good at those right. So focus on those things because even if you're net negative at the time, you want to compound yourself and make make money in the long run, hedge against those risks, right? Um, should I focus on ideation first or cost effectiveness first? Um, uh, I I don't know what the context is, but I'm presuming startups. Maybe like um, I, I would probably do both, and you know, figure out like a balance between both. Um, um, how do we truly prioritize our goals? How do we effectively plan uh, and decide? By the way, if you can, if you can, um, um, you know, if you can, um, like the people who have not asked a question, if they uh, go ahead and ask, I'm happy to also answer that as well. And um, uh, Arjita, are there any questions that you want to flag for me from Google? Uh, I, I preemptively give you permission to kind of unmute yourself and go ahead. Yes. That's a good question. And um, you know, to be very fair and to be very honest, this has been a thought that's plagued me for the longest time. Like how how can you be effective and and you know um work um, while you're um, you know while you're while you're doing it remotely because um, you know as you study like I think a lot of the stuff that you do on campus uh, which may appear to be a waste of time like, you know you would spend if you have a test the following day a lot of people would spend time till 9 p.m. not doing anything and then start at like 3 a.m. for a test the following day at 9 a.m. which sounds like a complete absurd waste of time right but turns out all the stuff that you do um, Ends up de-stressing you and preparing you for what you need to do next, and it helps in a way. So I, I don't mean to, you know, um, to allude to that, but what I'm getting at here is, if you want to, you know, better um, manage your system, try to research your own experience. Try to see when you're most productive and when you're best functioning. Um, some of the things that have really helped me is each time I go into a session, I write down on the piece of paper um, what the objective of that session is, what I seek to get out of it. And you know why am I actually here? Try to kind of really uh, bring excitement to it, right? Uh, that way you can kind of um, do it. And then you know th there is an upside to like remote. You can always focus on um, learning using MOOCs. Like there's a lot of great MOOCs, and you know I think I think um, learning through you know if you if you need to learn like um, you know um, physics from the from the god of physics, you can do that. Like MIT Open Courseware allows you to kind of learn there. So. Um, I think like being in the confines of your home has a lot of benefits that like you can you can kind of uh, choose to embrace. Yeah, go ahead, Arjuna. Yes, I actually do. Um, so you need to break up with your cell phone. I think that's the uh, your relationship with your cell phone is the most toxic one you will have for the longest time. And the reason I say this is because. Um, as I gather, you guys um, are born in the ballpark of you know the 2000s, and and you know a lot of the times um, you've had very limited time where you've not had uh, access to a smartphone in in your waking um, you know hours. So I've had about five, I'm not saying that I've had a lot, a couple of years that I've not had a smartphone, right? So um, it is it is a very important um, um, you know question that you may have, and uh, how how can I actually uh, up my productivity. One of the best ways I've seen that does it, try to make it hard to make you, you know, uh, access your phone. Go keep your cell phone outside, outside your room or in, in the sink, charge it elsewhere, right? And, um, you know, you can, you can, uh, you can go ahead and charge it in another, uh, this thing, and then it becomes very hard for you to, uh, go and access it. And that, that kind of creates the friction. The other way that I've kind of done, I've, I've gotten myself a burner phone, so now I have a, a, a phone that has nothing but calls. So I, I can't do anything on it. And I, I, you know, I have a SIM card there and that's what I carry when I go out. So people can only reach me using calls and nothing else. And people who know me understand that. I think the other thing is 
try to try to create an atmosphere where you are intentionally hard to reach so that people understand that you are hard to reach right tell your parents tell everyone that you're hard to reach and i don't mean to endorse this because like your parents will probably kill me for this but but yeah you know try to try to focus on what really matters and i try to kind of get those long spans of like focus time uh w- one way to do that is to like switch off your phone just switch off your phone right um yeah uh, are there any other questions that i can answer there um yeah that's a that's a really good question um how uh, okay so um if you know you have a lot of the practices become becoming mundane i think it's time to shake it up i think there's a lot of good productivity advice out there um and and like i said uh, i'm a strong believer of what bruce lee says research your own experience like each time everyone's different and a lot of the stuff that you read in blog posts is so much um you know productivity advice out there and like very few people who can take it and actually actualize it so it's very important that you actually spend time um seeing what works for you and trying trying different things out and up until the point that you actually arrive at something that works you know don't don't do it like don't don't i i think the most important thing including for all of the exercises that you did today is that you don't take things for the way that they are you try to kind of question them and i think that's super important right mm-hmm. um yeah that's that's a good question i would say like it comes with practice try to observe yourself for the longest time uh you know when you start out it may be like you may have like a focus bandwidth of maybe 30 seconds 1 minute 2 minutes if you're lucky maybe 5 minutes without getting distracted and slowly try to like it's a muscle right focus is a muscle that you can actually train even i've been working hard towards training it like the way you could do push ups and like get better at uh, something like this you can definitely uh, kind of practice focus and you know try to try to time yourself uh, i've i've grown to realize through the lockdown that like meditation helps like take, taking 10 minutes to observe yourself in silence really really helps you to be um <laughs> um yeah so it, it really helps to meditate and to focus right um cool any any other uh, question i'm going to actually allow Uh, folks on the call um like if you can raise your hand i'll i'll call you out and then uh, you can unmute yourself yes sudat and and preference given to folks that have not asked a question before sir so how do we truly prioritize our goals you know how do we don't know which one to give more importance to i think i think it comes with time try out try out multiple things and like uh, arrive at like an eliminative strategy right so you don't need to necessarily arrive at three things you may have 10 okay. things on your list start eliminating from them and then you can arrive at three or four things three is just a number so that i think like with mental bandwidth you could do five you could do two you could do one but for the most part i would advise not to do beyond three aditya uh, aditya yeah. okay. i'm aditya pravin so first of all i thank you for your remarkable speech and uh, so i have to ask you one thing that i have been practicing this 1% rule uh, for a short run and i am re- i'm trying i'm repeatedly trying to practice this but i can cope up with my practice for only two or three days and the fourth day i'm going to normal so how can i keep it more effective so that's a good question i think like having some form of like personal belonging to that rule is probably um like very helpful like in that you know if you if you have um uh, if you end up uh, doing um um you know if you end up doing something that um that you're truly passionate about that you understand why you're doing like write down the why i think the why is very important um like and and if you write it down it it really helps and like something that i like you can look up don't break the chain i think that's also an interesting concept like where each day you're trying to maintain a streak for all of these things and you know you can you can keep going and um, try to try to at best not not lose out on the on the experience okay next on my list um bhavana um right so so how uh, many kids uh, these days have been uh, really pampered or sheltered in their home so i've been uh, i was wondering if you'd give any uh, advice on how they'd uh, increase their trajectories 
Um, okay. So the question is, um, how can you, how can you, um, uh, you know, uh, like despite being uh, pampered at home, how can you, how can you actually, um, uh, do, um, well, really, I think, I think it's great. Like that, uh, you could, you could, you know, embrace what you have right now. Like, and I think it's really great that you're getting some time to spend at home. This is not going to be the case forever. And, uh, you know, try to try to get yourself out of your comfort zone. Try to get to know your peers in a in a remote setting. I know that that's hard to sit, hard to do, but you know, try to try to actually spend some time talking to people that that you know uh, make you feel positive and and learn from them. That's that's something that's really helped me. And, um, you know, I think like most importantly, like being grateful for the time that you have at home is probably like one thing that I strongly encourage. Yeah. And do you have any self improvement book recommendations? Uh, I'm not a big uh, fan of of uh, you know self improvement per se, but uh, I, I like to believe that you know like reading it does not cut it unless you embody it. I really like this book, Atomic Habits. I think it's concise and quick, and like really uh, captures the essence of like what needs to be really. Lit. I'll make sure that the people that are watching this on YouTube as well kind of get the name of the book. Uh, Atomic Habits and Deep Work both are like super important. I think I like have like some time allocated to deep work on my calendar where you know I'm, I'm practically unreachable so i think it's very important for you to have that as well right um, um yeah go go ahead and and as we as we kind of approach the end of this let's let's maybe talk further and you can always have like a uh, you know my email address and you can you can communicate with me uh, but you know i'm i'm open to answering questions and i see that you know um, there are there are um, at least three, three or four more people that have asked questions. I just, if there are any questions on YouTube, feel free to flag them. I really need you to kind of go ahead and fill out some of this feedback. It's very important that you uh, do it so that like I can improve as well. So maybe go ahead and click this link. As you're filling out feedback, I'll continue to answer all the questions that you have. Okay? Um, how do we break out of our comfort zones if, and okay, how do we know if we're staying in our comfort zones and how do we break out of it? Staying at home makes it quite probable for us to stay in our comfort zones. Uh, that's a good question. And, um, you know, uh, my, my personal recommendation uh, to you uh, regarding this um, is, uh, okay, just, just sorry, my apologies. I'm going to send this link across so that you are able to get your hands on it. Um, you can type out the link as well. It's cutt.ly uh, slash JSON orientation 19. Um, right. Um, so you can, it's the same as the QR code. You can scan the QR code or you can use the link to kind of get uh, the same. So, um, identifying, so I'll break this down into like identifying a uh, comfort zone is actually relatively easy. Like, you know, when, when you know you're breezing through a lot of it and you know, you're not actually challenging your mind, you know, you're in a comfort zone with what you're doing. It's like a really important time to actually recognize it and to break out and how to break out of it. Well, spot something that like. Uh, counters the monotony, like something that's different from like what you intend to do. Uh, next on my list, I see Devi Priya. Can you go ahead and unmute and go ahead and ask a question? Yes, sir. I'm actually getting bored of things easily. So I'm afraid to set up some long time career goals. Okay. So yeah, that's, that's, that is a good question. And frankly, something that I could, all of us are, uh, you know, struggling with the, for the longest time. I think everyone was used to um, like doing long-term goals and like come in our generation, gens, like you know, Gen Z, Gen Y, millennials. You guys, um, like things move very fast, and it's very hard to actually stay committed to do one thing and to do one goal. But I think it's all about found, finding like what what gives you like most ease and like what you're better off, better at doing than all of the other people. And of course that comes with effort and exercise. So you try to kind of um, put in that time and try to actually understand, like go ahead and do like to Sadat's question earlier, try to become like eliminative about things that you don't like. And you can go ahead and start to start to kind of, you know, uh, isolate like what it is that you do and try it out. Sometimes, you know, it may take, uh, up to six months or a year to actually realize, but it's always good to kind of go ahead and give multiple things a shot, right? Um, okay, does anyone have uh, uh, 
Uh, okay, I, I like this question, and I'm going to definitely answer it. Um, how to ask a good question? That is, I think, the most important. And I, I think I'm going to add this as a slide. Uh, if if I intend to make a presentation like this again, definitely add this as a slide. So a good question is basically a question that's concise, that gets across in, in 10 seconds uh, the point that you want to make. And third, it is something that does not comprise of stuff that the speaker has already spoken, right? Uh, so very, very important that you that you uh, understand this. Like, um, if, you, if you have a question, you ask it to the point. And it's very, very important that you actually do this. Uh, to Sham's question, how will I manage the time that I lost? Well, I didn't lose time technically. I've allocated a buffer for this specific Q&A session that you're not on in the loop for. Hello, sir. Hi, Danish. Go ahead. No, sir, uh, I'm from Civil Brand, and sir, I want to code. So, sir, uh, can I coop up with both the two? How can I manage the time, sir? Yes, yes, that's a good question. And uh, I think everyone can code. I learned to code. Uh, you know, shortly after I graduated, and you know, um, and and some of it uh, I learned along the way. And I think anyone can learn to code uh, anytime, and it's it's completely there. There is ample lot of resources. In fact, there's too much information when it comes to coding. Picking the right kind of things and and focusing on that could be important. Think about what your end goal here is. If you want to, there are a lot of coding clubs and all of that that you can be a part of, and you know, code and learn to code as well. Uh, try to speak with your seniors who who um, have in the past done it. Um, you know, websites like I guess Hacker HackerRank, uh, Lead Code, all of these give you like options to to do challenges online, and you could you could learn a lot from them as well, right? Yes, sir. I am I am actually telling that uh, how can we coop up with both the two? I mean to say, uh, code as well as my main branch. So, so can we coop up the, uh, with both the two? Can we manage the time? Yes, um, I, I strongly believe that um, it is possible. It's hard, but nonetheless, it's possible because you spend a lot of um, time, uh, you know, doing doing a variety of things. And I think I think uh, you know your your branch is you know going to give you a lot of stuff to do during during the course of the semester. But you still have your vacations, you have time out otherwise, and you can always like if you really enjoy coding, then I think I'm sure you'll find time to to do that as well. And uh, I think it's very important because a lot of the skills that you know you have um, involve some amount of coding. It's it's good like as an engineer. Having like an added technical skill is always of benefit to you. Um, Thank you, sir. That's great. And uh, uh, Rashwant, do you want to go ahead and ask your question? I'm sorry if I pronounced your name wrong. Rahul, do you want to go? Sure. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Uh, actually, I just finished my thanks, sir. I don't know what I'm interested in or what to do. Okay. Uh, you don't know what to do and you don't know what you're interested in. Is that the question? Did I catch that right? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, try try different things. Like simple as that. Try a variety of things. You will arrive at something that you are interested in or something that doesn't make you unhappy. So either of the two, eliminatively, will have you arrive at, uh, at you know, that. Um, so, um, no, so due to so, pandemic. Um, so to the scope in my mind before uh, exploring the different fields or uh, what should it be? Yes, you could you could try out the different fields and arrive at something that interests you. Uh, Rahul, I'm going to go ahead and uh, mute you because there's a lot of feedback coming from your end. Uh, thank you. Um, so, um, yes, uh, who am I? Mugilam? I've gotten the name right. You can also go ahead and introduce yourself, actually. As you, yes, as you sir. Say. It's Mugilan. Yes, go ahead, Mugilan. Sir, actually, due to this pandemic, there are uh, the routine has been changed, sir. So I cannot find my true interest, which I was keeping it like for like six months before. Okay. So now, if I think of it, I am not feeling interested to it. So like, I don't know what is my interest right now. Like, can you? What can be done for that? <laughs> um, well, that's a good question. Um, personally, uh, I, I don't have any specific feedback uh, there, but um, you know, like just I, I think you know we 
we when we say that we're busy, we often basically mean that we don't have the priority for it right now. And oftentimes, it's not that we're actually busy, and we, you know, we we spend a lot of time doing things that um, you know. So so I guess allocating time, your uh, what it is that you used to do, really would help. Like if you're able to allocate time, that means it's found priority to be on your calendar. And once it's on your calendar, you can go ahead and do what you need to do. I think that that's um, that's um, could be really uh, useful. Monish, uh, I'm going to take that as a compliment. If I look like Hardik Pandya, uh, what uh, are there any questions on uh, on the YouTube chat that I'm I'm missing out on? And in the meantime, Mubina, you can go ahead and ask your question. Sir, can you send a GCAL like uh, experienced person's GCAL something like that? Yeah, for sure. Uh, Mubina, do you want to ask your question? Okay. Um, Arjuta, can you? So, can I ask? Sir? Yes. Yes, please go ahead. Uh, just in case I have a very good science fiction plot, should I write a book or approach a director person? Uh, I have no experience of doing either, but uh, but if you have a really good plot, I think uh, figure out that elevator pitch and pitch to as many people as possible, and someone will be interested. And you know, it's it's a game of numbers at the end of the day. And I think you'll be able to like wish you a lot of success as you kind of try things out and get to where you need to, right? Um, um uh, looking at whether i've answered some of these questions how do we know if okay i've answered this um oh, yes oh that's a that's a really good question and um so i think the concept of improvement it comes with a lot of like focus on on what it is that you're trying to do right um, and and setting up those milestones for yourself and like where it is that you need to get to early on is very very important. So um, you know when when asked if you're a good driver, right, you'd probably say yes. I, I'm a fantastic driver. I can drive a car. I've driven a car for the last five years, and I'm I'm a great driver. But technically, can you drive like Sebastian Vettel in in you know Red Bull Racing, for example? And uh, the the honest answer is no, I, I can't because despite having driven, I've not actually done focused effort to improve myself on an everyday basis. So a lot of the best orchestra musicians, a lot of the they focus on challenging themselves with pieces that are very complicated. And I think that could be like you know focusing on challenges that are above and beyond what you're capable of. But you get to a point of unconscious competence probably is the is the best path forward. So measuring those little instances, maybe using a notebook or like a habit tracker. To actually track how much progress you're making on an everyday basis could be could be really, uh, you know, meaningful. I think. Um, yeah, Ajita, any uh, questions that you may want uh, to ask? I, I encourage you to also like please uh, fill out the feedback because the feedback is the only way that I can get to know how you're thinking. And you know, the last time we received about a four point seven rating, and we were able to improve further. But uh, but you know like I, I would really encourage you to to you know, do this. Um, <laughs> that's a good question. Um, yeah, I think I think it's okay to fail, but you only fail one day. Like you can do it one day but the second day you kind of like i think a lot of people like at least i was for the longest time very hard on myself and i when i wasn't able to keep up you know i stopped that day but i think it's very important to actually keep that going and to keep the momentum going so even if you skip one day do it nonetheless right it's okay to skip a day basically i think that's the biggest advice i can give it's okay to skip a day um uh, just a like uh is it better starting up all by yourself uh is starting up all by yourself better than being co-founders with someone and being half paranoid about their sincerity? Well, if you're 
paranoid about another person's sincerity they're probably not the best co-founder for you like that's that's my honest advice keep looking and there are there are what 1200 people in your batch i'm sure you'll be able to find someone find you know like as you as you kind of are uh, how much through people meet people there'll definitely be someone they they're not necessarily the most uh, skilled they're not necessarily the most thoughtful they're not necessarily the most in, like extroverted but they're definitely someone that you know will give you a lot of uh, um, confidence in in what you do and uh, wish you all the best in in finding out your people mafia as well jaram i i i feel the same anxiety like uh, even i wonder when you guys will get to go to campus but up until the point that you don't you have to embrace what's what you have at hand right uh, and and uh, making um, you know that's awesome um that's really great uh, anand I'm, i'm really happy to hear that the lockdown has um, helped you explore your passions and um, you know a lot of my closest friends were dropers as well so don't you know in the short run it feels like you've lost a year but in the long run you've gained a, you've gained a life so focus on uh, you know what's what's at hand I, i don't think like drop like dropping a year is is um, really that um, don't worry too much about it. like try to focus on what's up ahead um any like how to improve reaction to difficult and new situations uh, i'm trying to get better at that myself but you know like one thing that's helped me is not to hold any expectations of how a situation is going to pan out so you know like the reason you know you feel disappointed is because you hold expectations and if you don't hold expectations of how a person's going to behave react and how you know a thing will pan out you don't need to worry about it as such right um um so when are we uh, when we really struggle for something are we um are we yearning for how uh, uh, it would wait I'm, i'm sorry i did not read this right when we really struggle for something and are yearning for how uh, for it how do we um, how do we control our anxiety and fear of losing um that's actually a really thoughtful question rupina i don't have a concrete answer to that but um, you know like i think i think speaking about it is, has been like one source of and and a lot of these right please don't take my question my answers to your questions as you know as the as the bible here like i think a lot of uh, it is just experiential and you know everyone everyone's kind of like and this is something we need to realize like everyone's figuring out life for themselves and one step at a time right and it's always good to take take it um, the way you and if you if you ever end up figuring out the answer to this question please do shoot me an email and i'd be happy to uh, you know learn from you as well right okay? um um okay i have my passion which is not going to earn me anything for a few years how can i gain the courage to leave my job after getting one uh, through my btech degree but well, that's a really really good question uh and and you know a lot of people don't find the courage to do that for the longest time i think um you know when you have a real passion um so it it kind of if you take a step back uh, and and you know when we think about where does our yearning for um earning come from right earning money it is from our parents and you know we we like to be in a safe zone when it comes to um how we how we uh, operate and for the longest time that is that is how i've been i've been taking care of things as well but if you ask me i think um it's very important to understand um what you truly believe in and as you kind of get get to a point where you made enough money or like you you will never have made enough money but as as you kind of get to a point of maturity where money starts to matter less you will start to automatically prioritize these things um and and when it comes to you know the, the courage to doing it i think i think you just got to do it like just do it one day speak openly about your passions and you know and and i think people will come and chase you for not doing it try to have like people who hold you to your words for accountability right um any other questions i should say cool uh so i you know i'm going to try like i'm definitely reading all your questions i i like i'm definitely going to be reading all the questions that you sent to me on that email address that i listed there and um you know i i will continue to also stay in touch and i encourage you to do that as well um and you know uh in in the course of you know your four years if there's anything that you um uh, end up learning i'm i'm happy to find out as well there are often times times that you know I, i probably will not be able to respond because of the sheer uh, blast of emails that come and i may end up missing out much like uh, but don't take it personally i think uh, you know it's, it's completely fine uh, we we all learn and i think it's it's going to be really good uh, 
Um, um, how much time do I spend on entertainment? Um, depends. Like I think I think I've transformed a lot of like. So this is this is really helped like thinking about um, you know like uh, exercise as a form of entertainment and like I enjoy doing it and. So like basically like restructuring, like reframing the thing really helps. But of course I spend a lot of time on like, you know, Netflix and whatnot and it's always fun. Yeah. How do you use time uh, on making me better at focus or learning something new? That's a really good question, Monesh. Um, yeah, I, I think just being able to like be mindful of your time will, will really, really help. And I think, you know, mindful of your mind space and how it is that you're going and you know like like i said i think i gave like a very specific tip earlier as well which is you write down what it is that you're going in for like try to mirror what your calendar has on a paper and what it is that you're going to achieve out of that one hour and be specific about it like if it is you know if you're studying like physics and you want to learn something specific like say that you're going to do this and eventually you will, you will end up getting uh, you know something there right um uh is it smarter to start up right away after finishing BTEC or get a job on the safer side? And I don't like the concept of uh, you know uh, playing it safe that way. I think you, you keep looking out for ideas that you feel very passionate about. And as and when you are um, you know you feel extremely passionate for something and you want to like you will know like, you will know when you want to like it it will occur to you and it will come to you. Don't like one advice that I would give you is if you are looking to start up, don't startup to startup that's the only advice i will give you because you will never you will never be able to so you you start up to solve a problem and to like focus on the problem and because i, I invest and i look at like when i when i, I mean whenever i meet um, you know like uh, founders it's often you know very easy to to come across people who um, who you know see right through their motives that way so it's it's very useful to do that how to be more attentive um uh good question well i i think just being mindful like you know of, of what it is that you want to achieve like i'm, I'm really focused on on thinking about the answer to your question uh color mini and you know i think think focusing on what it is that needs to be done is is very important and like i said it's all a skill and it's a muscle that you can train so keep like focusing on that so if you want to improve your english vocabulary that is weak right now um simple as reading a couple of books and like uh you know focusing on them could be could be really interesting i think like one of the nicer investments that i've made in the near past was to buy a kindle because like a kindle frees me of distraction and at the same time gives me access to all of those meanings so i think there's super important yeah. um divya divya darshini i think you've asked this um and i want to answer it as well how do you control your thoughts and i think it's a it's a skill like you you practice at it like just like playing the piano in this thing, you know, you, you start to like focus on something and keep keep trying, and eventually you can you can kind of see yourself through. I'm no expert at this, I'm no monk, but definitely something that I, I see a lot of value in doing. Um, so I'm going to take the last uh, question. So if you have anything that has been top of mind, please post it there, and um, I'm going to take the last question that I you know. Um, um, So top of mind, does anyone want to share uh, feedback for how they felt the session went? Yeah, Sibi, I think NIT Trichy regarding internships, I think NIT Trichy offers a fantastic launch pad that you can use to get to where you need to so I don't think like just just kind of go with the flow there learn what you need to be good at like class and I think you'll be able to get to where you need to don't worry too much about it right thank you for your feedback uh, Kumar um, I'm glad that you found it useful I hope that you know you're, you're also filling out feedback for me on that on that form as well okay right? this is the form in case you've not done it I encourage you to kind of click on it and do it it is very, very important, and it basically ensures that you know the, the batches to follow also learn a lot here, right? So with that, I'm going to 
um, close on this presentation for uh, being effective at an IT industry 2020. I hope you guys have a, like, and you know, considering it's the end of the year, I wish you all a very, very happy uh, new year and, you know, a very fruitful four years ahead and like hope that you learn a lot and I hope to learn from you as well, right? Uh, Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you, sir. It. Thank you, Sathwik. Uh, thank you so much, Jason, for taking your valuable time out of your schedule to give us this wonderful session. That was a very informative and entertaining session, and I'm sure that the audience gained quite a bit of valuable information that will definitely help them in the upcoming years. I would like to thank the audience for attending the session. And before we end, I request everyone to fill the feedback form, which we have once again put up in the comment section. Hope you all had a great time. Thank you so much, Jason. And have a great evening, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Hope you guys have a wonderful evening as well and a fantastic year ahead. Thank you so much, Arjuta, for organizing all of this. I think it's fantastic.